Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first look at this new radio from FreeSky. This is the Tyrannus Plus, the updated edition for 2019. Now it actually comes in two different versions. This is the standard edition. Uh, it doesn't have the wireless trainer function, doesn't have the upgraded switches, and also sadly it doesn't have the Hall Effect gimbal. So it's very much like my original radio was when I got it before I started adding all the pieces. Now for those of you that watch the channel, you'll have seen literally hundreds of videos on this, things like the QX7 and other Free Sky radios or FR Sky, depending on how you say it. Uh, I got this a couple of months after buying a Spectrum DX it was just over about half the price but could do about twice as much and it was love at first program so the OpenTX system is a little bit complicated but for those of you that watch it this you'll know that this has been my daily driver and literally had thousands of hours of happy flying using that radio so I'm interested in this new one because What's it like? How different is it? Are the differences good? Are the differences bad? Because there are lots of people in the same boat as me. Their original radios, that's now four, coming up to five years old. It's starting to show its age a little bit. And rather than just keep replacing individual components, it'll be good to just kind of buy a whole new radio and retire that one with due ceremony. So let me get this on the bench, go through everything. Uh, the highlight is uh, the hardware upgrades look really good. Um, but Free Sky seems to be doing some weird stuff with the software again. But let's get into it. So, first of all, let's unpack it. Let me show you how it comes. Uh, no real ceremony. Again, uh, I'll put links down below for everything. I got this one from Banggood. This is the non special edition version, so it hasn't got that wireless trainer function. Opening up the box, you have access to a little sticker sheet. Uh, what you could laughingly call a manual, uh, which is kind of standard for these kind of radios, just tells you where everything is and uh, how everything all works. You'll notice on here that it's only talking about access, but we'll get more into that when we get into the video in a moment. Opening the top, there she is, a brand new radio. Uh, for those of you that are Tyrannus lovers already, you will have spotted quite a few things that are already different. We get a little USB cable and we get a neck strap, but let's move that out of the way. Let's have a good look and let me give you an overview. Uh, this was filmed as I actually took it out of the package so you can see it's covered in little bits of packing foam. Um, the big difference is, of course, that you've probably spotted is the power button is now a button rather than a slider. Now everyone has their own particular preference, I don't mind, but that new power button does look a lot more modern. Turning it over, we have the standard jacks for out, uh, the trainer port, we have the old, exactly the same connection for USB. We have a full JR bay, which is fantastic, taking the connection off the bottom. Uh, then there is the same space, exactly the same space as last time for a nice LiPo. Now I use a 2S LiPo in mine and that's great. Looking around on, on the switches and how it's all laid out, the switches are identical. So we have one two position switch, everything else is three position switch, a rotating control with a dent in the middle, similar with the sliders on the shoulders. Other side, we have another rotating control with an indent, three position switches, and a momentary switch at the back, another slider, and a new control, a button on the shoulder. Now, if I grab the original Tyrannus, for those of you that don't have both, and kind of put them side by side, you'll see how closely related they actually are. Now, obviously, the my Tyrannus has had the Hall Effect gimbals. I installed the six-position switch, uh, but you can see there's a couple of little differences on the screen. Uh, so the the way it says plus and things have all moved around. Uh, the power button is hidden away behind the pieces. Some of the decals have changed. Uh, the navigation is very different. But in terms of the size, feel, weight, and everything of the radio, this feels like putting on a comfortable pair of slippers if you're already a Tyrannus owner. There isn't any big surprises. Uh, on mine, I just checked the decal sheet. There aren't any stickers showing me which are the switch positions on the shoulders. Um, I'm not sure whether that's just been an omission or whether all of them will come like that. Looks like the antenna housing is a little bit different on this one too than the old version. So I'm guessing that not all the plastics will be interchangeable. So let me pop the battery out of my other radio and pop it into here. Uh, the only other change I can see is that there are some nice molded things to show you which is the stereo out and which is the trainer port, which is a great addition because that's something I always have to double check when I'm doing my stuff. So let me plug in a battery and we'll power it up. 
So with the battery installed, the big thing I want to check is what modes are there by default. So if we just look here, we have the access protocol and then we have the AWCST D16 and LR12. So that's great. It means we can talk to the D16 uh, pieces. If we check the external mode radio frequency stuff, then the support for the R9M, uh, SBUS, PPM, but unfortunately they haven't added the support in this version of OpenTX on here. Now this is running OpenTX 2.3, uh, which is uh, kind of not out yet, it's a nightly build, which makes it a bit of a pain to try and also get the SD card contents because the SD card isn't actually provided with the radio as well, which I think is a bit of an oversight. For the cost of an SD card, it should have been all set up. So what does it all mean? Well, I think the good news is, is that from a hardware point of view, uh, this is the trance we know and love. Now, I am aware that somebody managed to get hold of a nightly build of OpenTX 2.3 in the middle of August that actually had all of the capabilities turned on and managed to test the radio with the uh, Crossfire module and it worked flawlessly. So that looks like the inverter in here is running at full speed and will support things like Crossfire, which is great news. I was really worried about that. So hopefully they will continue that as they manufacture this radio. Uh, the disappointing thing is that it's running a version of OpenTX that isn't available yet. It's still in development. It isn't supported in the latest version of the companion, which means that it's not as easy to kind of move models around and set everything up. And the SD card and all those things are not available on the website. And all that stuff, in my humble opinion, should be ready when you release a radio so that you can just crack on and get on with it. I do like the fact that they've got the D16 protocol on here as well as the new access protocols. For those of us that really like uh, Free Sky stuff and have been using it for a very long time, that means that we can still bind to all of those X series receivers that's hanging around. But if you want to use D8 or one of those other protocols, then you're going to have to wait for OpenTX 2.3 to come out uh, officially unless you want to use a nightly build, which isn't recommended that you fly on nightly builds of OpenTX before it's released. And that's the other point, which is, of course, they have not included the support for Crossfire. And that, for me, was always the benefit of FreeSky and why I have spent so much time and effort trying to help people use both FreeSky radios and OpenTX because they embraced all the new technology and tried to make it as easy as possible. I think, sadly, for me, it feels like as FreeSky have got bigger and more successful, that openness and approach to embracing new technology and making things for easier for pilots to just use whatever they want has kind of reduced over time. And it's something that I hope they get back to. Uh, while the R9M is a, a pretty reasonable long range system, uh, it's not Crossfire. And lots of us use the Tyrannus just because it's one of the few Free Sky radios that support Crossfire. And if they ever stop supporting Crossfire on radios like this, then I'd go and buy something else. So let's hope that OpenTX remains OpenTX and doesn't become closed TX. And let's hope that Free Sky uh, just think about what it is that customers want rather than what it is they want us to buy. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.